How many people do you know who have been diagnosed with a mental disorder? One. With a mental disorder? Um, two. I'm sure a couple. I know a few. About three or four personally. Probably four. Half a dozen? I'll say about nine. At least a dozen. I'll bet I could count 15. 20, that I personally know. My uh, oldest son is diagnosed. When my mother was diagnosed. A kid from uh, my childhood. My friend the next boyfriend. Just my grandfather and cousins. A friend of my friends. A sister. My neighbors. Two friends. A girlfriend. A niece. One friend. My mother. All my friends, everybody I know. Siamo circondati da un'apparente marea di malattie mentali. Da dove provengono? Gli psichiatri, il cui manuale diagnostico e statistico può etichettare chiunque sulla Terra oggi come malato mentale. I psychiatrists, I believe, they look at every human being and they divide humans into two classes. Clients and potential clients. We see this no more uh, prevalent in any field than in the field of the mental disorders, where one disease after another is invented and then popularized and the public is made to worry about it. It's a disease mongering. It's the selling of sickness. You know, sometimes it's a, it's a drug in search of a market and it's giving public awareness to minor conditions with the ultimate goal is to sell more medications. It's not caring for people. When you run out of symptoms, you don't have any more clientele to market to. So you have to invent disease. And with psychiatric medications, you can invent diseases all day long. Look at human variation. Everyday things like shyness, um, sadness, or even a situational depressions um, like grieving, postpartum depression, they all become studied and prescriptions start to get written for these drugs. Before these drugs were introduced in the market, people who had these conditions would not have been given any drug at all. And so it is the branding of a disease and it is the branding of a drug for the treatment of a disease that did not exist before the industry made the disease. Un esempio, timidezza, una situazione di vita comune ascritta dagli psichiatri nel loro manuale diagnostico e statistico con il nome di disturbo dell'ansietà sociale. You know, people are nervous. Well, they come up with, say, um, social anxiety disorder. SAD, they'll call it SAD. And the connotation is that everybody ought to be happy and that here's a drug that can make you happy. Uh, so that a common occurrence, which is every now and again everybody's sad, we ought to be treating with a drug. Well, then they'll get this PR firm to um, drum up uh, business for this. They'll put out all these studies that find, you know, there's so many people afflicted with this sad, you know, and they'll start putting it in magazines. They'll start putting it on TV. They'll start a patient advocacy group that say, you know, that we're all affected by this. And, and then they'll come out with Paxil works for this. So they go to the FDA and they said, well, we ran this study and this works for this new invented disorder and that is sad, social anxiety disorder. And millions of people suffer from it. And it's purely fictional. It's, it's a normal human emotion that everybody experiences at certain times or another, but they make it into a disease. Paxil, once it got approved by the FDA as the first antidepressant to be used for social anxiety, it took off huge. And um, it just moved from number three in the market amongst its peer drugs to number one in the market. Disturbo dell'ansietà sociale è solo uno dei molti disturbi creati dagli psichiatri che alimentano il boom nelle prescrizioni dei farmaci psicotropi. Psychiatrists work to promote what the latest disease is going to be. These days, bipolar is getting that same type of promotion. Everybody's being educated about their bipolar illness, when in fact, we know having emotional ups and downs is distinctly human. Now bipolar is thrown around like water. You've got bipolar, I have bipolar. If I'm up today, I'm, I'm manic. If I go home tonight and I'm depressed because I'm tired, that shows I have bipolar disease. It's a lot of hokum. Yeah, I see a lot of uh, things on television about bipolar. Bipolar? You know, they talk about bipolar a lot. Um, my oldest son was diagnosed with bipolar. 
bipolar. I've known a lot of bipolar. Two friends from uh, both of them were like diagnosed with bipolar. Some people I know that are bipolar. Um, my neighbor, she was bipolar. I was diagnosed with bipolar. My mother had bipolar. He was actually bipolar. Schizophrenic bipolar. <laughs> bipolar and obsessive compulsive. Bipolar and ADHD. Bipolar disorder. Bipolar, yeah. Bipolar situation. Bipolar. 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 There are three personality disorders, and then the most recent is bipolar. And that's just been in the past year. A diffondere la popolarità del disturbo bipolare, in particolare dei bambini, è lo psichiatra dottor Joseph Biederman, un oratore pagato, consigliere e ricercatore di 25 diverse case farmaceutiche. In 1996, the drug companies funneled all this money to this Dr. Biederman, he's well known. He's the one that came up and said that there's bipolar disorder in little kids. This was unheard of. There was no bipolar disorder in any kids. He came up with the study and published the articles out all over the world and other doctors followed his lead that bipolar is in little kids. A causa della costante promozione da parte del dottor Biederman e i suoi colleghi, c'è stato un aumento del 4000% di diagnosi di disturbi bipolari nei bambini dal 1994, mentre il numero di antipsicotici che vengono loro prescritti è quintuplicato fino ad una stima di 2,5 milioni di prescrizioni. Nel 2008 il dottor Biederman era stato denunciato da un'investigazione del Senato per non aver denunciato il reddito di 1,6 milioni di dollari ricevuti dalle case farmaceutiche. Ma il danno era stato fatto. Per via della moda del disturbo bipolare creato dal dottor Biederman, gli antipsicotici, alcuni dei più potenti farmaci psicotropi prescritti, sono i farmaci psichiatrici prescelti. I tre farmaci antipsicotici più venduti hanno prodotto entrate per un totale di 25.000 dollari ogni minuto. Indipendentemente da quanto grande diventi l'industria dei farmaci psicotropi prescritti, gli psichiatri lavorano sodo nel fornire le diagnosi per farla diventare ancora più grande. Let's say this is the pie right here of the um, of a certain class of medications and this is a pretty profitable pie and everybody wants a piece of that pie. Um, but what would happen if we made that pie even bigger? And how you make the pie even bigger is by expanding the uses for those drugs. They've already got a drug that's approved on the shelf. They can just pull it off the shelf, rename it, repackage it, and say, look, we've got a new drug for a new illness. When Prozac's patent ran out, that Eli Lilly had to look for a new source of profits. So all they did was change the name of the drug from Prozac to Seraphim, changed the color of the pill from green to pink, and marketed it for PMDD, which was newly introduced into this book. What it tells us is, that you, if you can come up with a label, a diagnostic label for a drug, then you can sell it like hotcakes. It's a business model, and it's a billion dollar business model, and it works, and it's gonna keep continuing. Oggi, chiunque potrebbe inconsapevolmente assumere un farmaco psichiatrico che è stato rietichettato, riconfezionato e prescritto a scopi non psichiatrici. Ziban, prescritto come cura per il fumare e in realtà l'antidepressivo Wellbutrin. Cimbalta, un farmaco psichiatrico per la depressione e l'ansietà, è stato ora introdotto sul mercato come ientreve per l'incontinenza urinaria. I ricercatori della psichiatria svolgono test con farmaci psicotropi su un'ampia varietà di condizioni, come l'obesità, l'alcolismo, il gioco d'azzardo, le vampate di calore, l'herpes, la nausea, il prurito, i brividi e un eccessivo tirare dei capelli. C'è una pillola per ogni malattia e praticamente a nessuno sta venendo detto quanto sono pericolosi gli psicofarmaci. As a chemist, I'm making these drugs, they're proving deadly in our labs and they're proving deadly in other labs, dangerous, ineffective, causing the exact same thing they're supposed to treat. How are they selling them? For anyone who's given a label of a psychotic illness, drugs seem to be the automatic choice of treatments as night follows day. That's all psychiatry does. It's dominated by psychopharmacologists who do nothing but manage symptoms by dispensing pills. That's it. And they don't work. But the fact that they don't work 
works to the advantage of the drunk companies and the psychiatrists, which means that you're not cured, which means that you're a patient for life, you're a customer, you're a client for life. And the worse your health gets, the more drugs you need. It's, it's a great deal for them. We should all be up in arms about the way we're being treated by psychiatry today. This is a very dangerous industry that has gone so far overboard in inventing fictitious diseases and drugging our children and our population that I consider it to be engaged in crimes against humanity. Con oltre 80 miliardi l'anno in ballo per farmaci psichiatrici, è impossibile farsi sfuggire la saturazione di disturbi psichiatrici che diventano un affare nella società del giorno d'oggi. Ma dietro al marketing si nasconde un segreto che i clienti della psichiatria rimarrebbero scioccati a conoscere. Come vengono testati questi farmaci? E sono sicuri?